It's been about four years now since I've been training from home and it all started with COVID. In 2020, when the lockdowns were first initiated, um, I had a couple dumbbells just laying around in my living room and decided to use those to start training from home because everything was locked down. So there was no way to get into a regular gym. Some people have their little hacks or you know people they knew that could get them into a gym or a gym space. And anyone that had um, a home gym or a garage gym prior to that lockdown was in the best position. But for me, I wasn't. Honestly, I still consider myself lucky enough to have had a pair of 30 pound dumbbells um, at home. So I never used them until the lockdowns were initiated. They became my daily bread and butter, the only things I could train with. And that's when I began to really, really enjoy training with just dumbbells. Now in 2021, everything changed. I moved from uh, where I was at the time to somewhere where I had an actual basement so that I could convert into a home gym setup. So that's where we are right now. It's not my ideal home gym setup and it's not at all where I want it to be or where I wanted it to be at the end of this process. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not great for most people, but I said it's not ideal. There's a lot of things that I've noticed that could be better about um, a home gym or what you would want uh, in a home gym. I've been training for about two and a half years in this gym and this space has evolved over that time. So it hasn't remained the same, but not a lot has changed over that time. A lot of things I wanted to do, I never got around to doing because I told myself, I'm just gonna wait till I'm able to have a bit more of a dedicated space just for a gym because this space uh, the basement doesn't just act as a gym for me it's a lot of different things so it's not ideal like i said then we also have the unfinished walls which honestly is not aesthetic to look at and it's a basement so equipment is extremely difficult to get down here and it's moody all the time it's literally always moody summer winter doesn't matter so i've recently just moved into my new place and decided to convert the garage into my new home gym space. So this is going to be my dedicated home gym space and the new headquarters for Midas MVMT, the movement. Okay, here we go. This is where all the workouts are going to be going down moving forward. So I've got a garage space here, as you guys can see. It's about the same size as um, the basement, but it's better. It's more dedicated towards what I'm trying to do here. So I've got a lot of big plans for the space and moving forward for the channel. So I really appreciate you guys sticking with me throughout all the way till this point. First thing we're gonna be doing here is painting the entire space. Um, and this isn't my first time doing a project like that because we're gonna be doing it ourselves. So it's gonna be a DIY project as opposed to you know having a painter come in and do all of that. It's not a crazy job. So why not do it ourselves, right? A little bit of a personal touch. Yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and transform the space. Let's do this. Okay, so we're through the first stage of the transformative process, which was uh, painting. We applied two coats of paint to um, the staircase, the garage door, the entire ceiling, and along the base of um, the entire space. So we left off some spaces that we're gonna apply some wallpaper to, as well as um, the wall behind the staircase to apply um, a different color of paint. So white is what we're going for there. We've gone with storm gray across the entire space. Besides that, in order to prevent wear and tear to the paint job on the staircase, what we've done is picked up this uh, anti-slip tape. That's what they're called. So it's a roll that you can, I just got off Amazon and it's, they come in different grits, which is just different roughnesses. So I got an 80 grit, um, eight inch by 30 feet roll. So what it's supposed to do is pretty much be uh, stuck onto there. So you tape it on there like you would regular tape. And then it provides a barrier, a rough surface you know, between um, the feet and the staircase because I don't want direct contact between people's feet and the staircase because the paint job is gonna get worn off and we don't want that. We've really just put all that time into getting this thing done. Wanna keep it looking good. So this will also add a nice little touch and a nice little, you know, feel on the feet or on whatever when you're walking in. Not, you know, slip on there and break your neck or something like that. But yeah, I'm gonna do this for a little bit here and then move on to the next stage.
The next thing I did was replace the thermostat that came installed with the garage heater. It only has the option of being controlled manually, meaning I cannot access it remotely to get the space warmed up before my workouts. Now, this is a big no-no in my book, so I decided to replace it with an older Ecobee smart thermostat that I had laying around. Usually when replacing things like that, I take pictures of all connections to make sure I have them for reference later. The replacement was really fast and easy to do. It's a very similar process to replacing the power receptacle if you've ever done that before. Once I had all of my new connections made, I mounted the thermostat to the wall, waited for it to power up, and then jumped right into the setup process. That didn't take very long to do, and just like that, I now had automated control of the heater in there. This means I can turn it on and off from my phone from anywhere, or even just set up automated schedules for the heater to come on half an hour before my sessions on different days. The next thing to do was install the floors. I had hoped to do this part after completing the walls as I prefer to work my way down from the top to the bottom. At this point, we had already wasted weeks on end going back and forth with the wallpaper company who kept messing up my order and my shipments. It was definitely an ordeal, but I eventually decided to stop waiting around and moved on to laying out the 8mm rubber tiles that I bought from a local shop. These tiles are commonly used in home gym setups and they're great for taking impact from weight loads. I was also hoping to add better sound absorption and a more familiar gym aesthetic to the space using the same rubber tiles. Now, installing them was pretty easy, but it was very tedious to say the least. They use an interlocking mechanism to connect to each other and according to what the flooring company told me, they simply need to be laid out starting from the center and then building outwards. Each tile came with an arrow on the backside which had to all point in the same direction to create a seamless look. Laying out the tiles wasn't even the most tedious part. Trimming around the corners and the edges on the other hand definitely was. It involved taking a lot of measurements and using a utility knife with some serious cutting power. This part of the flooring process took the most amount of time to do, but I was able to get it done and seeing the final result made it all worth it. Besides adding a bit of sound absorption, it also added the gym aesthetic I was hoping to achieve on the ground. The white specs also did a great job of adding to the overall seamless look of the interconnected tiles. Right now, I'm about to start work on the media wall. This, that's what I'm calling it. So it's going to be media and storage. I'm going to have a TV uh, hanging out from there and uh, some storage down here because I need storage and I don't have any in here right now. To start things off, I'm going to switch out um, the regular receptacle that they've got installed there. I'm going to switch it out with one that's got um, USB type C outlets. I want to be able to charge my phone whenever I'm here using that um, outlet. So that's why I'm going to install that there. Now, just like with the thermostat replacement, switching out the receptacle simply involved cutting off power to the circuit at the breaker panel and then switching the wire connections from the old receptacle to the new one. I made sure to adhere to electrical code by using a tamper-resistant receptacle with a 65-watt USB-C power delivery port. Now, this is more than enough to charge any phone at its fastest capability without the need for an adapter. The screwless plate it came with also looks so much better and adds a modern touch to the entire space. After about a month and a half and some messed up shipments, we finally received the last wallpaper shipment to allow us complete one of the walls in a single go. At this point, we were still waiting to receive the wallpapers for the opposite wall, but we couldn't wait any longer to do both walls at once, so we jumped into the one that we had as soon as possible. Installing wallpapers require a lot of precision and can easily take a lot of time. My case was unconventional, meaning I had some really tall walls and some weird angles to navigate. I employed some help from my girlfriend and we were able to get the wall completely wallpapered in about six to eight hours. As the wait for the rest of the wallpaper continued, I decided to carry on with other things like mounting the speakers I had picked up at discounted rates on the last Black Friday. I decided to go with corner mounted speakers and picked up some Sonos One SLs for this reason. I've used them before in other spaces, so I knew they would be good enough for this use case as well. My plan was to install four of them in all four corners of the room to create two stereo pairs for top tier audio quality. Before mounting anything, I made sure to have each speaker set up and connected to the phone app. I had to know that they were all working correctly before putting them up to avoid having to go back up there to make any changes that require pressing the button directly on the device. Once I could confirm that they were all working in unison, I decided to begin mounting them using wall mounts I picked up on Amazon. Starting with the most difficult corner, 
I put them up one at a time, which involved mounting a wall bracket, which connects to another bracket, which has to be installed onto the speaker first. I took some measurements before mounting the wall bracket to make sure that the speaker would be level and that it was being installed at the correct height. It was super awkward drilling into the wall at that corner due to the stairs getting in the way of the ladder, but I made it work regardless. Once I had the wall bracket mounted, getting the speaker on it was easy. Prior to taking possession of the house, I asked the builders to install receptacles in all four corners of the room for use with these speakers. Having a clean installation and appearance is always important to me, so I'm glad I was able to get it done this way. I moved on to the other corners and repeated the process again, except this time it was much easier to do due to the lower height and fully accessible ladder space. This was one of those things that I would promised myself I was definitely going to do when I finally had a dedicated home gym space. After about two and a half months, we finally, and I mean finally, received the rest of the wallpaper for the second wall. We couldn't waste another second and jumped right into sticking them on. Hannah was back again here to provide much needed assistance in getting the wall precisely wallpapered. This wall definitely took longer and was much more difficult to do as well. The reason for that is because it had a decent amount of weird areas which required extreme accuracy and navigation to get right. Wallpapering around the gas line without messing things up was probably the hardest of it all, but thankfully, I was able to handle that effectively. After what felt like a whole day but took close to about 12 hours, it was all done and I couldn't have been happier with the result. At this point, the space was ready for the heavy artillery to be brought in. This was one of the first shipments I received, but I couldn't bring it in to set it up due to the wall and the floors not being complete yet. The machine came in two boxes. A large one containing almost a hundred parts needed to either build it up or to use with it once it's built. The second box was much smaller and contained all the weights needed for the cable machine. I already had experience building something very similar to this, but it still took a bit of deciphering to understand the user manual before beginning the building process. I knew this wasn't going to be a one person job, so I enlisted the help of friends all the way through. Building the machine took us a total of three days going at it for about an average of six hours each day. This might take somebody else less or even more time, but regardless, it's going to take uh, quite a while to build. The final product looked great and felt pretty solid. The on machine storage for plates was perfect for holding all my metal plates, saving me storage and preventing the need to spend extra money on an alternative storage method. Okay, so we just got through building the craziest machine that uh, I've ever built. I'll be honest with you guys, this thing took approximately three days for us to put together. And it's because we didn't want to rush the whole process. We wanted to make sure that we followed the instructions to the T. And I'll be honest, the instructions weren't the best. They weren't the easiest to follow, but I'm happy we were able to put it together and finally have it fully functioning. So next up, we've got this uh, all-in-one or a multifunction utility bench. So it's a regular bench, uh, but it can do more than just that. I'll show you guys when it's all done and set up, but I love this machine. The only thing I don't like about it so far is the color. So it's um, in red, but my theme is black and gold or darker colors and gold. So it doesn't really fit in there. The utility bench and its attachments came in the same box and setting that up was much easier and faster. The bench came with three attachments that combined to open up many more new ways to train with the bench, which made me excited to use it. After setting up the bench, I decided to mount the last Sonos speaker. When I did the initial mounting of the other three, I left this one out because it wasn't going into a corner at the top. Now, this was because of the fact that there's a heater that was already installed there, making it impossible to mount a speaker at that height. Alternatively, I had the builders install the power receptacle for this speaker at a more natural height. I also took that opportunity to replace the white receptacle with the black one to better blend in with the wallpaper and then use the product that functions as a faceplate and a wall speaker holder to mount the Sonos to the wall. I thought the final product looked pretty cool, so I decided to change out any other receptacle in the room that was over a dark surface. Tackling the tough issue of storage was up next. I decided to go with cubby storage mounted onto the wall within a small jot out around the entrance area. I bought something called a Kalax from Ikea, which I had prior experience using. 
It worked well then, so I thought, why not get it again? I've also found that it's very inexpensive and provides a lot of value for any gym space. I picked it up in white so that it blends in easier with the media wall that it will be mounted onto. I've built these things a few times now and it was always fast and easy every single time. Before mounting the Kalax onto the wall, I decided to take care of the TV which had to go above it. Installing the TV wall mount was super fast and easy as well and we got this done in no time and were able to bring in the TV for mounting. For the TV, I had a 48 inch LG C2 OLED which had been sitting in my storage room waiting for this specific day. The first thing I did was clean it up and then I attached the other half of the wall mount onto its back. Next thing I did was stick an Apple TV box at the back there as well using a mount that I had picked up off Amazon earlier. Now I'm not a big fan of Wi-Fi or wireless connections and prefer to have everything hardwired when possible. So I made sure to have the builders install an ethernet port and a power receptacle right next to each other where the TV will be mounted. The Apple TV box was a refurbished discounted model that I picked up off Amazon and it allows me to access a lot of things including my smart home setup directly from the TV whenever I'm in here. This will be perfect for getting Apple Home notifications and checking on the cameras I've installed around my home whenever I'm here. After mounting on the Apple TV box, it was time to put the whole thing up on the wall. This stage was probably the most terrified I've been throughout the entire gym building process. The C2 is a very, very slim OLED TV and we had to mount it up high without putting pressure on the display. This was very tricky to do to say the least, but I had some help and we got it done without damaging anything. We followed that up by mounting the Kalax right after as well, and then proceeded to add some dark gray square cubbies to a few of the openings. Setting up the Apple TV box was next up, and this was quick and easy to do, especially since it just synchronizes with other Apple TVs that I've got around the house, joining my smart home setup in the process. Earlier on, we brought over dumbbells, weight plates, and gym accessories from my old basement setup to use here, but decided to pick up a new rack with a much slimmer profile to avoid taking up much needed space. The rack arrived a few days later than I was told to expect it, but no harm was done. Well, that's until I opened up the box and tried setting it up. The bag holding all the hardware for installation had been tampered with and was now missing a bolt and a nut. This was my first time buying anything from Rural Canada and I was already disappointed. I reached out to them for the missing piece and was sent out a new one, which was great. Before it arrived, I decided to put it together nonetheless, leaving a single spot at the top without a bolt and a nut. Even while missing a bolt and a nut, I was still able to use the rack to hold up my hex dumbbell set from 10 to 100 pounds, excluding a pair of 65s, 75s, 85s, and 95s. The work of moving the dumbbells onto the rack was a workout in itself, but it didn't take very long to complete. I thought the final dumbbell setup looked mostly clean and tidy and moved on to bring in some of the other items I had picked up for the space. The first was a jumping box which I had picked up to add some new exercises to the space and also to act as a sort of bench that I could use when needed. I opted for a soft box so it wasn't super rigid and tough to sit on. I also brought in my old foldable bench and some other things that I used quite often at my old gym. We're almost done now putting the space together. We've got most things done. It's taken a lot longer than I would have uh, hoped for, but you know, that's how it goes with DIY projects. I left storage for the last part of the entire project because of course you want to make sure that you know where everything goes first. So um, we've got a bunch of bars, a bunch of uh, cable attachments, all of that stuff. General gym stuff that you usually wouldn't have places to put. Uh, so I'm going to try to do something with the wall here. It's called wall control. It's not something new. A lot of people have been doing this for a while already. So uh, we're going to try to do that here as well as somewhere else. If you're familiar with the concept of using pegboards for wall storage, then what you need to know is that wall control is the metal version of your IKEA plastic pegboards. It has a much better build quality with a higher load bearing capacity. They were designed to hold heavy tools like drills and the likes in a workshop or a storage area, so they work phenomenally well when used as wall storage for gym accessories. I had six bumper plates for my whole setup that had no place to go, so I had to figure something out. I decided to go with the bumper stacker for some vertical storage. I also picked up a set of wheels to go with it to allow for easily moving the plates around for my compound exercises as needed. Now, putting this together was probably the easiest thing I did 
throughout the entire process. And I had it set up and loaded with all six blades within about 15 minutes. The vertical barbell storage on the all-in-one home gym equipment was great for holding my single barbell, but I also had a curl bar to store which didn't have a home. There happens to be an additional attachment which can be bought separately from the dumbbell rack storage, but paired together with it to add some vertical barbell storage to the rack. Immediately, I ordered a pair of them only for them to arrive with the wrong hole sizes. I decided to do some more research only to find out that there are two of these items being sold by the brand with different names. Unfortunately for me, I had ordered the wrong ones and had to try exchanging for the right set. I reached out to their customer service, hoping that I had built some goodwill with them, having bought a decent amount of items from their store over the past few months. I was told that I would have to pay for the return shipping of the wrong order and then order a new set, which by the way, also included shipping. Now, to me, this was ridiculous, especially considering the price of shipping was essentially half of the cost of the product itself. I was hoping they would allow me to do a swap while they covered the shipping as most other large companies would have done in my experience. I'm still in the process of talking to them about this situation and will report back on how it goes in my next video tour in the gym space. Anyway, while handling that situation in the background, I decided to begin cleaning up and tidying the space before adding the final piece to get the space to where I wanted it to be at the start. I did a quick vacuum of the area first and then brought in the RoboVac that I'd been saving for the space. I wanted to make sure my home gym floors were always clean and so I decided to add a robot vacuum that I can put on a cleaning schedule. RoboVacs aren't ideal in a lot of situations and spaces, especially ones with lots of heavy traffic where people tend to be all the time. The gym is similar to an office space where I can guarantee a time at night when no one will be in there and this is the best situation for a RoboVac. The one I had also came with the mopping feature which I thought was perfect since I expect to have dusty floors every now and then due to the nature of the space being a garage. Setting it up was fast and easy and once that was done, I had it set up on the phone app for remote control and also to access more features like scheduling. The first thing I did was use the AI mapping feature on it to build out a quick map. And then once it was fully charged, I did a full clean of the entire space, which took about 23 minutes for it to complete. I'm still going to do the occasional general cleaning, but the RoboVax job is to keep things clean on a more consistent basis, which is why I chose to add it. Okay, so everything is complete. The gym is uh, where I want it to be, at least for now. Uh, it didn't quite happen as fast as I would have liked. Uh, and the main reason for that was some products were just delayed multiple times. And honestly, I learned a lot. I learned a lot throughout this entire process, you know, things to avoid, things to make sure that um, uh, I pay attention to next time I'm doing projects like this or next time I'm putting together a space that I will be using. So it was a good learning process, you know, for a lot of different things. And this space is not done 100%, but it is, you know, done to where I want it to be currently. There's going to be more things that will change over time. So you guys can expect more videos, more upgrade videos uh, pertaining to my uh, new garage gym. So garage gym videos will be coming to the channel, my favorite equipment, stuff like that. I'll also be sharing my experience with some of the equipment that I already have currently and um, letting you guys know if it's worth checking out. Because one thing about home gym equipment is you know, you don't want to just pick them up. It's a huge commitment. So you got to make sure that you know what you're picking up before you even pick it up or even think about it. One of the biggest things I'm excited for with this space uh, is that it's going to keep evolving. And I know that. But yeah, thank you guys for watching as always. And if you have any questions about anything at all uh, as regards the home, the new home gym space or even just any questions in general, make sure to leave it down in the comments section below. You already know what time it is, man. We about to get to work in here. We about to get uh, to build in those physiques and you guys can expect all of the videos to start coming out after this. I'm also going to follow up this video with a tour video of the entire space to share more information about, you know, individual equipment and things that I've got in here. But yeah, I will catch you guys in my next video. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy Midas and I'm out, y'all.